Are you a novice wood turner struggling to figure out, uh, now that you're getting into bowl turning, how you reverse the bowl for final finishing to get rid of that tenon? Have I got some ideas for you? I'm going to show you about four different ways that you can accomplish that task. Hi y'all, I'm Mike Peace. I'm passionate about wood turning and I'm here to share with you tools, tips, tricks, and techniques to help you become a better wood turner. So if that's what you're interested in, please consider clicking the subscribe button and so you don't miss future uh, future videos. Some of my friends prefer to use a recess to, to hold a bowl or plate with, others prefer a tin, and I agree with my friends. Uh, but the first technique I want to show you is actually uh, turning a final, a final tenon. Uh, to do that, you're going to have to hold your, your blank, whether it's a bowl or a platter, uh, on a chuck or a face plate. Uh, and one of those techniques is also using a woodworm screw. Those are all effective techniques. Roll chucks started becoming affordable back in around 1988 when Technotool came out with his first uh, affordable uh, scroll, four jaw scroll chuck for, for wood turners and then Vicmark uh, followed shortly, shortly after that. After that, juried art shows tended to start rejecting bowls that had a, uh, had a recess that had not been, been turned away. Uh, and my friend Robo Hippie, who had it, it, it been a production uh, bowl turner, he said it never interfered with any of his customers or never uh, slowed down uh, demand, so maybe this was more of a wood turning thing than, than what, what people actually wanted. So if you do plan to keep a recess, you want to keep that recess as small, uh, uh, very small, maybe somewhere in the area of 3 seconds of an inch. And then you'll do any finished sanding, possibly add a, a, a decorative uh, a V groove or, or a bead and possibly even doing some texturing in the bottom before you reverse it to finish the inside. Okay, I finished turning this little Bradford pear bowl inside now. Now it's time to uh, reverse, uh, reverse chuck it. So we're going to do this the most traditional way, and, and actually one of the easier ways. I'm going to make, take a little spindle scrap that I've got. This happens to be, uh, be pine, but it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. And I'm just going to chuck it up. I'm going to take one pass, kind of get a, see if I can't get a little smoother uh, rounded surface here so it'll somewhat mate with the bottom. And then I'll put a little pad of some sort on it. Keep in mind that the, you want the bowl to register a little bit on the outside. You want to kind of hollow this just a little bit so it doesn't rub in the middle. So we're going to take this piece of foam, put it in the bottom of the bowl, bring it up against that spindle scrap we're going to use as a jam chuck. Now I'm going to use a 60 degree cone because I want to be able to get in there real close as we're turning away this, this tenon. And a cone seems to work a little bit better than than uh, than a live center like like this that uh, doesn't give you doesn't give you as much room to get to it. So I'm going to use a very small bowl gouge. I'm using a 3 8 inch uh, V V style, and I'm just going to come in there and start nibbling away this wood like this, and just. Ease it in. Like I say, this is a 3 8 inch bar, bar stock. Take very small cuts. And by cutting in this way, you're not fighting in grain as much as you would if you came in this way, where you get in grain, side grain, in grain, side grain. This way, you're cutting right into the face grain. Now here's where I'm going to start taking down the tenon. Let me see if I can't get you a different view. We're just going to go in a little deeper here. Sweep out. I know how deep the bottom is on the inside, so this is, I'm not worried about coming through. I want to be, this to be a gentle concave. I 
I can probably sand some of this now, but I'm not going to worry about sanding it now. I'll, I'll worry about sanding it when I finish. Just want to knock that crisp edge off there. I can't take another pass. Ride the bevel. Ride the bevel. Ride the bevel. Now here's where I want to take this tenon down in the back and make it uh, very small. I'm going to change uh, tools. I'm going to switch to a, a detail gouge, which you know, very very shallow flute, so it's got a lot of lot of strength here in the beam, so to speak. And I'm just going to start coming in here and coming behind this tenon, and then start coming down, being gentle. I don't want to knock this, you can shear this, uh, shear the fibers off here and, and break that tenon, so you want to be careful. Small tool, light cut, sharp tool. Now this shows you the problem with this cut. If you want to texture or put some rings in here, it's just a bit a bit harder to do. I could probably get in there and put a ring. To do that I'd need to sand. So I'm going to go ahead and off camera. I'm going to sand a little bit and probably put one little, one or two little rings right, here. You can see with this, this shot that I do have concave this up a little bit. I'm going to take, uh, now we're going to go ahead, I've sanded it a little bit. We're going to go ahead and and put a couple of uh, tiny little little V grooves on the bottom and I barely got room to get get in here to the side I could just uh, just barely barely make it and that's the problem with this approach is you've still got to use tailstock and it gets in your way I'm going to try to take that down just a little bit more because it'll make it easier to deal with. I think I'll slow the speed down a little bit, no more than a thousand. Actually, bring it down a little bit less than a thousand. Okay, now at this point, you got two choices. You can use a thin cutoff uh, saw. Uh, but I'm going to I'm going to show you approach that you know an alternative that works sometimes sometimes it doesn't if you get uh, get it where the grain is running in this direction and if you just get a get a handle sometimes you get lucky and it just shears off just like that and it leaves just a little bit of a dimple but I can get rid of that real quickly with uh, sandpaper so that's that's one approach to reverse chucking. Now another way, third way to reverse reverse chuck a bowl is a jam chuck. Now here's one I did a number of years ago for a demonstration on how to how to chuck wood and I just hung on to it. It still works. The next way that works, it, it tends to work with smaller bowls because you have a hard time getting a large enough piece of wood for a jam chuck. We're using a jam chuck I made several years ago and a little bowl that I demonstrated fitting in that jam chuck, but uh, they've mo the wood has moved a little bit over those years. Matter of fact, it's probably been five years ago. Um, so I'm going to take a box scraper, and I'm going to take off just a little bit. These walls are not parallel; they're actually a little bit wider at the at the outside, so that it'll snug in a little bit like a think of it, of it as a large uh, Morse taper. And we're just going to take off just the tiniest little bit. Okay, just a little bit more off with a scraper, and you can see how, how that runs true. And the contact of the wood is all the way around. So this is a, if you make a nice snug wood morse taper, so to speak, it, this is a very, very strong hold, and it gives you full access to the back. I said this was this method was better suited for smaller bowls, but actually, if you got your big old blank like this, uh, 
this big old bowl blank that's got eat up with with bugs um, you can turn around and use that for your jam chuck I'm using those 75 millimeter bowl jaws give a nice good good grip here and there we go there's that jam chuck technique and to release this hopefully I can tap it with my hand with a heat of my hand and pop it out now if this was smaller I could probably pop it on the side it would come out but I don't think it's going to work on anything this big but it might and it did that's the easiest way to take it out okay when I got my little jet mini lay 12 years ago it came with a set of the the Nova miniature uh, what they call cold jaws it had these rubber uh, stoppers on them they, they tended to mark the wood a little bit Frankly, I didn't have real good luck with them. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have that good a tool control when I made the first few bowls. I threw a couple of bowls, and after that, I said that these these weren't a good match for me. Uh, I, it is a good solution for some people. Uh, the different manufacturers have these, and they call them different things. Uh, they're called uh, Record Power calls these remounting jaws. That's the set I've got here. Other manufacturers have names such as Technotool calls them cold jaws, one way calls them mega jaws, Vicmark adjust the jaws, Robert Sorby calls them Sorby Patriot Chuck Bowl reversing jaws. Uh, but what it does allow you to do is, is put a bowl in there and use these, these, uh, these stoppers. Now, uh, their smaller set uh, will work on a mini lathe of less than 10 inches, won't hold too large a bowl. It says that 8 inches, but I'd say that's being optimistic if you had a bowl that's a shape that, uh, that, that these uh, stops go on the inside and that's um, one of the things I did want to point out on these uh, reversing reversing jaws they are very finely machined in that they have the same groove that allows you to put a set of chuck jaws I've got the normal jaws but you could put other uh, jaws uh, for record power and with this groove they, they fit in there they hold very tight they come with a larger set of screws that go through here, through both set of jaws to, to fasten them. And that way, uh, if you're doing some production bowl turning, you might be able to speed a process up by being able to use these for one operation and then turn around and reverse it uh, and not have to remove the, the chuck. Now, with these, these uh, mega jaws, uh, these stoppers, they're profiled with different with different each side's got a slightly different profile so you can adjust you can turn these things around to best fit your particular uh, the bowl that you're trying to to adjust so give me a moment to put the other set of jaws on here and adjust these and we'll come back one way you can support my channel is to visit my Amazon shop as shown on the, the screen and also in the description below the video and if you purchase something I'll get a small commission Okay, I've got all these uh, uh, stoppers adjusted. And like I say, there's different profiles. There's some writing on here, so I've got the power heading in the same place on each one because otherwise they're diff somewhat difficult to figure out which what's the difference in the prof profile. So you mount your bowl on there and simply tighten it up. And I can tell this is th these are a lot different than using these rubber stoppers. The rubber stoppers probably work. They never worked for me uh, when I started 12 years ago. But with these profile, uh, they really snug up and, and then based on the, your shape of your bowl, you can get the ideal uh, profile. So this holds this, uh, you know, that's, that's not going anywhere. And this is the beauty of being able to use these jaws that give you the full uh, access to the bottom. I've got some nice texturing now I need to just uh, put a little bit of groove on each side to kind of make it pop. Turn the speed up a little bit. Now another aspect of these jaws, uh, I've never done it but uh, it is a possibility, is you can you can fabricate wooden jaws that go up here that that uh, give you a range and you could actually have steps in them so you can control different size uh, uh, bowl, bowl blanks. Uh, a, a variation of this type of chuck is the Longworth chuck which has that same style of having these types of uh, 
stops on it, but the, it's adjustable as shown in this picture by this one by uh, Ron Brown uh, uh, cells. Uh, it's a lot speedier. This is a pretty fussy way of having to adjust it. There's, you know, you make a mistake on three or four and you got to go back and readjust it. And uh, so it, it, it's a tedious operation getting these, getting all these bumpers just, just right. Whereas longer worth, you can kind of dial it in. Now, uh, an additional uh, method of reversing, I don't have one here, but here's a picture of one by Ron Brown uh, that's uh, a donut chuck, and it gives you uh, some flexibilities. My preference is a vacuum chuck, and I'll show you in a moment, but sometimes uh, a donut chuck will allow you to chuck up things such as uh, items that have voids in it, uh, or possibly uh, something on the rim that keeps it from, from being held uh, uh, flat, so it, it can secure some pieces of wood that you couldn't use in a vacuum chuck. My preferred way of reversing a bowl to finish off the bottom is using a vacuum chuck whenever possible where the, uh, uh, the bowl I'm turning doesn't have any holes or voids in it that would prevent the use of a vacuum chuck. Okay, let me show you this in actual action, uh, practical application. You want to keep your uh, reference to the center on your turning till the very end. In this case, this is what we're using this for is to turn this off. So I've got it mounted. I've got my pump ready to go. Turn it on. I'm going to turn the pressure down a little bit. Turn the pressure down a little bit, it's a little high. It's on about 15 pounds per inch, so I think I'm getting somewhere between, halfway between 60 and 120 pounds. Put on my face shield. I'm going to provide you a link in the description of this video to an article I wrote on how I made my vacuum chuck if you're interested in possibly doing, doing one yourself. So what reverse uh, chucking method do you pr prefer and why? Please leave it in the comments, comments below. I welcome, I, as always, I welcome your thoughts and comments and I especially want to hear any comments from you uh, first time visitors. Y'all stay safe and come on back here.